Do you know what Easter means? What do y'all think Easter means? The resurrection. The resurrection. How many of y'all, that's like Chinese? Like when I say it's a resurrection, you're like, man, that's Chinese. Like, what does that even mean? Do you know how hard it is to serve an invisible God? Like we will pray to stones. We will burn sage in our house. <laughs> it stinks. And you're burning sage with the windows down. <laughs> it's like the demons are running all over your house trying to get out. And you look and your kids and your husband are doing this. <laughs> so like we'll believe in like the stars. Right? We wish upon a star. How many of when you see a shooting star you wish? Huh? That's okay. But really, you can pray to the one who created the stars. Like I used to, y'all, when my daddy was dying, I remember being so mad at God. Anybody ever been mad at God? Come on. You, got, you can't hear what you don't reveal. How many of y'all been mad at God? Like, man, dude, like you had the perfect opportunity to drop the mic. Like you had the perfect opportunity, God, to show out. And where are you? And I remember when my daddy was taking his last breath that Mimi was just talking about. Well, she's not fabulous. Y'all, she's 76 and fine. But I remember when my dad was dying, and I just knew, like, I had put my dad all over social media. Like, my daddy was the smartest man you ever met. He was gorgeous. He was, I mean, he was laying in the morgue. I showed Angelo yesterday a picture of him laying on the, on the morgue. And you're like, GQ. Like, literally... Everything looked perfect, but yet his mind was dead. And that's how life is. Sometimes we go through things in our life that literally takes our value. Like things we don't understand, like a death of a loved one. Your mom and dad died 18 months apart. Now what? And I remember when my dad was dying, and I'm leaning over my dad, and I'm like, no, 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 God. You got the perfect opportunity to show out and start a revival. When my daddy literally gets up off that bed, acting like a little boy, he looks down and sees those knockoff Crocs that mom got him from prom. <laughs> he has so much vein. And you going to make him put prom? They weren't even real. Crocs? And I, and I had this scenario in my head that one day he's going to wake up and he's going to look down and see them knock off Crocs and he's going to be really mad at us. Like all I gave y'all in life and you put knock off Crocs on me? So I knew God was going to heal him because I believed the Bible. And I'm laying over my dad and he's taking his last breath. And I said, God, why didn't you take my ex? <laughs> like... Some of us do this. Like these people don't even want to be alive. Like they're wearing the whole family out. Why not take somebody that's gambling with their life every day? Why are you going to take somebody that was traveling all over the world, that put up two big churches, that saved people, that gave up his whole life for people? Why? And I heard the Lord say this. Because I give everyone a chance. Your ex ain't ready, but he is. And he's getting his ultimate healing in heaven. Not the way we want it. And so today, I want to talk to you about if you're still here. How many of y'all are still here? You're here because you, I'm looking at you and you showed it look good. You're here, which means God has a plan. How many feel like God's already gotten up and left? How many feel like what you've done is so bad that he can never recover? Come on, it's okay. Don't be embarrassed. I can put up all my hands and feet. You feel like that you literally have gotten out of the will of God. And so now you wake up every day. How many feel like you struggle with depression? You struggle with depression, anxiety. Here's why. Because you have taken what's gone on in your past and you're staring at it. And you can't move forward because of the guilt of then. And so we can't let go of it because the church world... I said, sit on the back row. You smell like Mary Jane. You came here smelling like a whole pot stick. You had an affair. Go sit on the back row. Take the mic away from you. I remember that same man that took his last breath. When I'm laying in my bed at my house, drunk as a skunk at 38. 
And my daddy, I'm walking up the stairs. My boys are sleeping downstairs. I just walked through a divorce after 18 years. I felt so much shame because of church. Because every time I would see people, they would look me up and down. And it was inside of me. When you get healed inside of you, what they think don't even matter. You don't care. In fact, you walk into a room like, <laughs> I'm back. And I remember walking upstairs and I was, had so much shame. And I would come in this church every day. I mean, every Sunday. Not every day. I just didn't even want to come Sunday. And I would get up here and I would sing because that was all I felt I was worth doing, singing. And I had to do it because I was living in their house because I lost everything in that 18-year marriage. And I remember walking up those steps drunk. But you know when you're drunk, you don't think you're drunk. <laughs> Oh, no, you don't think you drunk at all, man. You drove home just like this. You saw double all the way home. But because of the guilt, that's what's driving you to do what you're doing. You do know that, right? Is the guilt that you won't let go of. That's why you're reaching for things that are not of God. Because you are ashamed. You're ashamed that you couldn't be in your kid's life because of addiction. You're ashamed that your marriage ended because of an affair. You're ashamed that you had a gambling problem and now you're struggling paycheck to paycheck. And so we're living in this guilt but today is our day to understand that he got up so you ain't got to stay down. Y'all listen to me. This ain't just another Easter Sunday. This is 2024. And God said, you're back. You're coming back greater. I'm going to restore everything the devil has stolen. I'm going to heal your marriage. I'm going to bring that person in your life that is going to elevate you, push you to break through and not break down. I'm going to make you the first millionaire in your family. And I'm not even going to start till you're 40. I remember laying in that bed, drunk, but didn't think I was. And my daddy walks upstairs, I play dead. Because I think I ain't drunk. And so if I'm just laying there dead, he'll think I'm asleep. Forget all the pictures laying on the floor. And I remember my daddy leaned over me, and he said, baby. I went. He said, I hope you're not drunk in the morning. Because you're going to have to praise your way through at Limitless. I mean, at Church of the Harvest. That was before I changed the name. He said, you're going to get up and lead praise and worship. And I said, Daddy, all those white people in your church, <laughs> they're going to die on the spot. Because I'm going to smell like a French hoe. <laughs> and I'm probably still going to have a bus. And I can't get up and lead any type of worship song. He said, baby, he said, I don't care what you got to do. He said, but you're going to do this. You understand me. He said, you're going to praise your way through. He said, and every Sunday, even if you fall, you're going to get back up there. And I remember that first day I got back up in church on Sunday, and I still was a little buzz. And all I could sing was, Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Come on. Why? Because he's my master, not you. <laughs> my savior, Jesus. Like a fragrance, like the honeysuckle, after the rain. That's all I could do because I was struggling with shame and I was struggling with people judging me. But he wasn't through with me yet. He's not done with me yet. Come on, y'all. He's not done with you yet. There's so much more to your story. <laughs> He's not done with you yet. Take a look at me now. <laughs> Take a look at me now. Baby, you're back. I need you to realize something in this building today. If you were the only one left on this planet, he would still get off that throne. And he would get on that cross. And it is not by accident that online you are watching us. It is not by accident that you made your way in this church. Because all he wants me to tell you today is, I'm so proud of you. He's telling you this morning, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you that you did not give up. That you should have died. That you should have quit after that death. 
He knew when your child died. He knew whenever you struggled with that situation that nobody knew about because you didn't feel like you could tell anybody. Because he's not done with you yet. He's not done with you yet. There's so much more to your story. It's a bestseller. He's not done with you yet. Let the way make her through. <laughs> Let the way make her through into your life, into your situation. Right now, I dare you to say, God, I'm getting out of your way. I don't, I don't know who you are. I've had a bad reputation of who you are. People have represented you wrong. But God, I want you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, Easter means resurrection. Today is a day to stop being delayed by guilt. Stop it. I don't know how to stop it, Kim. I don't know how to stop it. Stop it. That's how you stop it. Sometimes you got to escort people to the balcony. And you got to tell them, I love you, but I love you from up there. Because where I'm going in April, where I'm going in May, you're a, you're a whole problem to me. Every time you come in my life, you remind me of that DUI. Every time you come in my life, you remind me of that affair. But where I'm going, God said, I got to get up. And in order for me to get up, it takes me moving some of you to the balcony. Because if you can't forget my past, I'm going to put you in my past. Let the way make her through. Let the way make her through. Who's the way maker? Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's got you. Jesus. One thing we have to understand about Jesus. Y'all ready for this? Jesus' life wasn't taken away. You ready? He gave it up. He's a thug. He could have got on that cross. And he could have smite everybody. He could have come down and he could have sent angels and they could have taken everybody that's saying, crucify him. He could have zapped them dead, 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 but he didn't. He said, because 2,000 years, 2,000 years, there's some people that are going to be up in Limitless. And they were going to feel like their story was over. But they're going to walk up into Limitless and they're going to get hope. Hope is going to download on the inside of you. Here's a good thing about God. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready? Huh? Y'all ready? Listen to this. When God comes on the scene, it's like getting in a bungee, stepping off that wall, and flying through the air. When you have a real experience with God, what is that? When you say, I surrender all. I surrender all. I can't do nothing, but you can. And when you give it over to God, you take your hands off of it. How many of y'all are fixers? How many of y'all are fixers? How many of y'all control freaks? Did y'all know controlling people don't trust God? <laughs> Let the way make her through. I used to be a control freak. And I lay hands on myself every day and say, God, I know I can't go where you want me to go as long as I'm trying to control. I never dreamed in a million years, y'all, at 41 years old, I'd be sitting on the side of the road in a knockoff Bentley, which was my 300 Chrysler. <laughs> and it's blowing up and smoke is coming out of it. And on the side of 75, I'm starting to little feel sorry for myself. And I realize misery loves company and it's boring. And so what I did was, because I'd wait for the car to stop overheating, I took my phone out. And I thought, God, you think of everything. You've given me my own smoke machine. And I took my phone out. And I told the devil, devil, you should have messed with me before I got broke down on the side of 75. Because I don't know what God is about to do with what I'm about to do. But I took that video out and I started talking to people that were sitting on the side of the road just like me. And I said, you want to give up, but giving up ain't your option. You got to stop talking about giving up when you ain't got the option to give up. Because the Bible says that life and death are the power of your words. Some of your life looks the way it looks because of your mouth. 
I ain't never going to be like my mama. You just like her. You're allowing yourself to be identified with all the haters that have come in your life when there are thousands and thousands of people that celebrate you and look at all your stuff, but you are focused on the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that don't like you. They don't like you because it's your spirit agitating their devils. Do you hear me? You are way more powerful than you think it's, you are, and you've got to stop dumbing yourself down to their level. Lay hands on yourself every day before I get up. This is what I do. Father, I give you permission to wreck my life with Ephesians 3.20. That he's going to do exceedingly abundantly more than I could ever ask or think. Lord, don't let me get in my own way. Listen to me. Jesus' life wasn't taken away. He gave it up. Let's read to John 19.30. Y'all ready? It says, when Jesus had tasted it, he said, what? It is what? It is what? It is no, this is a drop of, drop of the mic. You can't be like, it is finished. That's a problem. Y'all got to put some like, it is finished. Make everybody like, good God, what is wrong with it? Hey, uh-uh. <laughs> you can't get out of where you are patty caking. Some of y'all like a victim in your own story because you're feeling sorry for yourself. How is that getting you anywhere? He says, when Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. What is finished? Huh? It's over. Why are you still talking about it? Why are you still dancing with it? Why are you still stalking it? I get emails. Y'all tell me all the time. I can't quit looking at his profile. That is the dumbest thing I've heard in my life. You are a whole grown up. <laughs> and if they were all that and part of your destiny, they could have never left. Do you hear me? They could have never walked out of your life because your destiny is never attached to anybody that got up and walked away. <laughs> Let the way make her through. Oh, I'm mad. I used to lay in my bed and I'd say, God, kill him. God didn't tell me how to pray for him. He just said, pray. So I'd pray, God, kill him. Kill him with a train. Because <laughs> I knew if a train killed him, Benny Hinn couldn't bring him back to life. <laughs> One day God said, you do realize you're not going anywhere praying those prayers. There's something wrong with your heart. You got to take this to the bank. Y'all listen to me. It is Finished. Then what did he do? What did he do? He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. He said, baby, you're going to be ratchet, but I'm going to turn you righteous. You're going to be hood, and I'm going to turn you holy. I'm going to take your mess and make it a message. I'm going to turn your scars into stars. I'm taking your bad, 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 bad birdie self, and I'm lifting you higher. This is how he rose. Listen, Easter is resurrection. I, and specifically, it's the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the grave. So actually, Easter means specifically Jesus is alive. Why? So we can live. He took one for the team. He brought you back to life. How many of y'all been at a place you're like, I ain't coming back out of this? How many? You've been in a place so dark, you're like, man, I ain't coming up out of this. In jail, right? You don't even look good in orange. And you find yourself in jail. DUI several times. You got five mug shots in the Atlanta newspaper. He says, I got it all covered. But you got to stop falling over it again. What does that mean? I got to stop breaking cycles. Do you know how you're a generational curse breaker? Do y'all know how? You know how? When you're an alcoholic, stop going to the liquor store. Stop slipping in someone's DMs that ain't your spouse. Stop liking hot girl pictures. Stop talking to that boss at your job that ain't your husband while your husband's out here killing himself to take care of y'all. Stop going to the gym and putting more effort in yourself going to the gym than you do at home. 
when something needs to change, what happens first? What? You got to change. You ain't even slept with your husband or your wife in six months? Because y'all mad. Mad, mad. How's that working? That is miserable. I have lived in a relationship where I wish to God I didn't live in that relationship. And all I had to do was suck up my pride. When God got on that cross, he got on the cross so you could suck up your pride. He got on that cross so he could take you and put your lights in billboard lights. And say, this one I'm proud of. This is one of my favorites. Right? Listen, he received 39 stripes. I'm about to paint you a picture. He took 39 stripes because why? 40 was known to kill somebody. And they wanted him to live. Did you know there's 39 major de- sicknesses that cause death? And he took 39 stripes. Do you think that's ironic? He took it because you can be healed. You know why we don't get healed? Let me tell you why we don't get healed. Because we let people get in our ear. Oh, girl, let God's will be done. You got cancer again. Just We just pray God's will be done. It is God's will for you to be healed. It is God's will for your marriage to be resurrected. But we get in this place where the enemy can't take us out, so he wears us out by putting negative Nellies in our life. Hater Helens, Limpid Larrys, Critical Carols, Messy Marys. If your name was any of that, I'm not talking to you. Do not email me. I love all of you. I'm trying to get all of you, okay? He received 39 stripes because 40 was known to kill a man, but they wanted him to live. They held handfuls of his beard and hair and pulled it out by the roots because they wanted him to live. They kicked, punched, and spit on him for hours until there wasn't a single spot on his body that wasn't covered in blood, but they wanted him to live. Does this sound like some of y'all? You're like, you just won't leave me alone, I'm dying. I'm over here bleeding on people that didn't cut me because why don't you just give me a break? You divorced me and you still won't let me out of your life. Jesus did it as an example of what you can put up with and take yourself. It's called taking the power away from other people and putting the power on the cross. After hours of of being beaten, mocked and whipped and flogged and tortured, they made him walk with the cross. Where is God when I'm over here eating romaine noodles? 38 years, I gave up my life for them just to say they don't love me and now I'm starting all over again. Let the way make her through. He says, a rough piece of wood with splinters digging into fresh wounds because they wanted him to live. We celebrate Easter with beautiful pastels and earthly colors. We come in here and yesterday, how many of y'all came yesterday? It was so much fun. What? Where are y'all? Y'all, we partied up in here. You gotta start coming to these community things so that we got your back. We gotta cover you. But we celebrate Easter with pastel colors and happy children, hunting eggs and chocolate. But the truth is, There was absolutely nothing happy about that day that Jesus died. It was cruel. It was bloody. It was nasty. He could have stopped all of it. He could have called down every angel in heaven to demolish every person standing and shouting crucified. But he didn't. He knew in order for Sunday, Easter, Resurrection Sunday, to come, there had to be a Friday. Monday we watched as he began to walk knowing where he was going Tuesday he's probably a little stressed out knowing where he was going so he's on edge so he walks in the temple and he's throwing over tables and he's thug at his finest then on Wednesday he starts walking again 
on Thursday, he sits down with his 12 posse at a table with all of his disciples, knowing that one of them was going to get him on the cross because of their lies. And he was such a good God that he never one time looked at any of the disciples that would have probably threw some punches. He never looked at them one time and said, Judas is going to get me on the cross because he knew that it would turn how they viewed on Judas and he didn't want that. But yeah, we will go ratchet. We will get in people's comments and give our opinion. My question to you today is, could you sit at a table knowing you're about to go to the cross? What do you do when someone comes at you a side eye? What do you do? What do you do when somebody's got what you want and they keep getting blessed and you ain't getting blessed at all? And that comparison demon wants to jump on you and you want to start hating your life. God is saying today, let the way make her through. I got you. He says in Romans 8, 28, that he's working all things together for your good. All I'm asking from you today is to check your heart. Check your heart. Who's making you mad? And why do they have so much power? Why does that loud mouth, chunky butt aunt of yours? You already know how she is. Why do you let what she says move you? Because it takes sandpaper to get you smooth enough to elevate. And with every elevation comes separation. But the enemy always comes back. And he uses the little foxes to spoil the vine. It's the doors that are open in our lives that we never dealt with. Unforgiveness, anger, bitterness, hate, jealousy. And he says today, can you lay it down? PK, I don't know how. I don't know how to let it down. I can't forgive what my daddy did to me 45 years ago. I cannot remember the details, but I know it hurt. I can't let go. Because if I let go, it means I'm pardoning a crime that was committed against me. But not letting it go is like drinking poison and hoping they die. That's why you keep falling back. Because you ain't putting in the work. He knew in order to have a Sunday like today that we had to have a Friday. He knew in order to have joy, you have to carry your cross. He felt everything that day. He felt how your heart broke wide open when you watched your mama and daddy die. He felt how heavy your life was when you were staring down a barrel of a gun thinking your life was over. He carried the weight a burden whenever you lost your spouse and don't know how in the world to live your new normal he knows when you were laying in that homeless shelter because you could not break that addiction off of your life because that addiction spoke to you in your sleep and he said because of today all you gotta do is give it to me what does that mean you gotta make a conscious choice I'm letting it go. I'm not going back and dancing with it. I'm going to give God 30 days, y'all. April, everything can change in April. Do you understand me? My whole life shifted in a month. I didn't even look like the same woman in a month. I let crap go. I, I was looking hard. I was walking around saying, bye, Felicia. And in one month, Every day I would look in that mirror and I would lay hands on myself and I would say, God, I want to be happy. I want to know you for real. I don't want to walk around afraid of death. Afraid of if I die, who's going to take care of my sons? I want to live my life every day and I would pray it every day. And then I would lay hands on myself and say, God, I know that I'm walking in unforgiveness because I'm praying for him to die. But I don't know how to forgive. Raised a preacher's kid. And every day I would pray it. And one day I woke up and realized that I was forgiving. Because I wasn't praying for God to kill him, just hurt him. <laughs> Baby steps. And I kept laying hands on myself every day. 
And I said, God, let me make you proud. Listen, no matter how heavy your Friday is, how many feel like you're in your Friday? Where they take you and they're crucifying you and they won't let go and they keep just 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 taunting you and that sin keeps taunting you their words keep taunting you you lay awake at three o'clock in the morning looking up at the ceiling with your heart palpitating thinking every time you have another anxiety attack that you're gonna die baby you ain't dying when you walked into this church today god wanted me to tell you you're back hands on yourself every day say God I speak to this pain in my body you said by your stripes I am healed Lord I thank you for opening up a door of purpose for me so I'm not walking around feeling sorry for myself and comparing my life to other people I'm the whole month of April I'm going to take a break off of social media because I'm petty right now and I need this petty to fall off of me I got to stop allowing the enemy to come in my life and wreak havoc on me because I'm cold I'm chosen I'm anointed I'm appointed and devil when you come to me next time and tell me there's another storm coming in my life I'm going to stand flat footed and say devil I am the storm I am the storm I'm the storm I'm anointed everywhere my feet walk the mountains fall sickness can't have me pain can't have me what were the benefits y'all of Jesus dying number one Total forgiveness. Colossians 2 and 14. I'm hurrying. I'm done. He canceled the record of charges against us and he took it away. Every time he took a nail. The scars. Your scars are proof that you made it. Go get a tattoo on it, baby. Do whatever you want to do, but don't you ever hide your scar another day in your life. Don't you ever be ashamed of telling the truth about where you've been and what you've done because you are here. By his stripes, you are here. He said what you saw, he started, he is faithful to complete it. Listen to this. Number one, you're going to stay standing. Total forgiveness. Number two, complete healing. Number three, you know what complete healing is? Financial healing? You're so in debt, it's killing you. Anybody? You got so much debt. You're praying every day for the government to just get rid of them school loans. You ain't tired one day. <laughs> praying for a miracle ain't doing your part. Dying of sugar diabetes but ate a ho-ho at midnight. You, no, 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 no. You got to do your part. You want your marriage healed. You start doing how you want them to treat you. You want to sleep in the room with him? Get in bed with him tonight. Y'all ain't slept together in three months. Get in bed and slip your toe over by him. Start rubbing him. He'll be like, ha! Because men are easy. They easy. They just want you to love, honor, and respect them. Honey, hello. Is it me you're looking for? Honey, let the way make her through. <laughs> We're going to have the best marriages in this church, I promise you. Financial healing. Also relational healing. Also mental healing. You ain't got to walk around with schizophrenia. You don't have to walk around with the trigger. Some of y'all go into these people and they love keeping you. You got trigger bonds. You got trauma bonds. You serve a God that got on that cross and died for you. And baby, he got up. And when he got up, you know what he did? He said, it is finished. It is finished for your depression. It is finished for those suicidal thoughts. It is finished for your bad.
true freedom. Some of your mamas need to let it go. Stop harassing your, your children. Stop nagging them. Stop helicopter parenting them. And when they leave your house, get your anointing oil. That's your real ammunition. Get your anointing oil. Your, your, your marriage is trying to fight through an uh, affair. When he's laying in that bed, you cannot be loud, woman. You got to be incognito. Father, I thank you that you're restoring everything that our actions have done to each other. That God, you're giving us spiritual amnesia. You're walking through your child's room. You're walking around, got that Holy Ghost fire. You're walking around telling the devil, I would open every door in my house and I would tell the devil, get out! And I would do it every day until there was peace in my house. See, you're looking for peace. You got peace. How do I got peace? Stop allowing the past to dictate your future. That rear view mirror is so small because you're not supposed to look behind to go straight. There's a big old windshield. Why are you looking behind you? The problem is we don't realize how much we let things and people and circumstances control us. What controls you? Are you a slave to your moods? You have mood swings? Do you need approval from others? You got media manipulation? Watching all this news? Honey, this news will kill you. You want to get in a bad mood? Watch the news. I don't know nothing going on with Kim. How do you not know what's going on? Because baby, I'm ready to go tomorrow. I live like this. What? Where are we going? Ha! <laughs> Why? Because I don't let anything in my spirit. I don't watch nothing that gets in my spirit that makes me sad. Nothing that makes me scared. Nothing that makes me hate my life. I unfollow people in real life. My yes is yes and my no is no. I'm not going to be manipulated by nobody. Ain't nobody going to tell me God ain't real because I've been there. I've been to hell and back. And I can tell you one thing, that when they walked out, he walked in. And I can tell you another thing, God loves late bloomers. How many late bloomers we got? I'm a late bloomer. I'm a late bloomer. Maybe it's your past. God is saying help is on the way. Everybody stand up on your feet. Y'all, he was in that tomb. Mary's going to see him in that tomb. And she was wondering as she was walking there, how are we going to get this rock rolled away? Never knowing that while she was sleeping, crying over the death of her baby, that he was getting up. But he's such a cool God. Because though the rock was rolled away, he took his linen. This is why I tell y'all to get your rooms clean. <laughs> he could have just thrown his thing, just the grave clothes off like that. But he decided to, my credit might be bad. I may not come buy a house because a pandemic took my house. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm still calling the creditors. Let them know I can't pay you $50, but I can pay you three. Because as long as I'm giving you something each month, you can't put me on the naughty report. It's saying I'm going to start taking care. He folded the grave clothes just like this to remind everybody I'm back y'all tell me that wasn't a move it's like when you're on the plane and you eat your food and you just throw it like that they know they can take your meal but when you go to the bathroom and you fold it like this they don't touch it because they know you're coming back y'all listen to me in this house and online God said you ain't seen nothing yet He's your redeemer. 
He's your peace. He's your joy. He is your banker. He is your lawyer. He is the judge. You listen to me. Can't nobody stop you. Can't nobody disqualify you. Can't nobody take your lies or anything you did in the past and hold it against you. Everybody in this room, lift up your hands like this. Say, Lord, get me out of my own way this week father I give you permission to do the Amos 9 13 in my life you know what it says it won't be long now God's decree said things are about to happen so fast your head is about to spin blessing upon blessing you won't be able to keep up baby you're gonna be the first millionaire in your family you're gonna be the first billionaire in your family you're gonna be the first one that after your fourth marriage ended that fifth one it's gonna be amazing you're gonna be the preacher in your family you're gonna be the business owner in your family you shall live and not die you are not who they say you are you are who he says he you are today, tomorrow, and forevermore. If you're in this room and you say, Kimberly, I'm struggling. I'm struggling letting go. I'm struggling believing what you're saying because my life has been so hard. And I've been in church before, and I know church has got a whole bunch of hypocrites, but y'all, not going to church because of hypocrites? It's like not going to the gym because people are fat. If we're gonna change the world, then we gotta be risk takers. We gotta be righteous troublemakers. What does that mean? Let the way maker through. I'm scared to death, Kim. I'm scared to trust again. I'm scared to step out of the boat. I'm scared, Kim, because of all the people around me. Baby, I pray over you that you get so convicted when stuff you're dealing with ain't of God that you choose to let go and trust the process. When my daddy was dying, my mother said, Kimberly, lay over him because transference is coming into your life. Everything your daddy should have gotten I laid over my daddy and as he was taking his last breath, I am weeping so hard. And one of the things I'm weeping for is I know I got to stand up in the pulpit and preach tomorrow. And I don't know that I can do it without being mad at God. And I heard God say, I didn't say you had to have it together when you got up there. Sometimes you got to walk in a season with your knees knocking. You got to say, God, I trust you when you don't. You got to lay hands on yourself every day and say, I ain't staying here. I may not know where I'm going, but God, you said you're a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So I'm getting up and I'm resurrecting myself. And as I resurrect myself, my kids are going to be resurrected. Everybody that comes in my past are going to shift because of the trajectory. Because I got up. Because I walked in a season that I didn't want to walk in. Everybody. Let's get saved again. You want to? You want to get saved again? All of us. Let's all get saved again. Because if he blows that trumpet, hell is hot. Friends, don't let friends go to hell, okay? Everybody lift up your hands like this. Say, Lord, I repent. Come on online, say it loud. Lord, I repent of my sins. And I ask you to be my Lord and Savior, to live in my heart, to make my heart your home. And Father, let me be your finest on fire employee. Let me make you proud. And Lord, when I fall, help me get back up quick. When I stumble, let me forgive myself quick. Live in my heart. Amen, amen, and amen. Baby, you got saved again. Yo, how did y'all love today? I'm so glad you came. I'm so honored.
that you're tuning in from all over the world, that all of y'all came and made your way in. How many churches did you pass to get here? A lot. But was it worth it? Y'all feel a push? That's what I'm here for. To push you. To make you uncomfortable. And make you get out of your own way. That means you got to forgive. Can you do it? Absolutely. Maybe not today. But tomorrow. The next day it's just going to fall off because you know you need forgiveness. Amen.